I'm Green Lichen, and today we're going to be talking about Robocop Rogue City. And more importantly, we're going to be answering the question, is this the best Robocop game ever? If you've ever wanted to be Robocop or become Robocop, then this is the game for you. Robocop Rogue City is a game, yeah of course it's a game, where you get to play as Robocop and go into the city and clean up crime. This involves you doing side quests like giving tickets to people that parked illegally, giving citations to people that are drinking in public and all sorts of other crimes. Of course you have a main mission which you can do at any time that you want to. These missions are ones that involve you going into certain buildings within the city and taking out the bad guys basically. Not only do you have your pistol but you have your fists as well so you can just punch enemies in the face or even grab them and throw them against other enemies or up against the wall. You have blueprints that allow you to upgrade your gun over time. You also have skills that allow you to choose the way you want to play the game. Each skill set is made up of a number of nodes. Every now and again on a node you will unlock a new ability or some sort of passive ability. This can be anything from being able to crack saves without needing a code, being able to charge your enemies and hurt them or escape from danger quickly, or just build public trust so that your public trust points go up double the amount every time you do something good. The game gives you the freedom to play it the way that you want to, which is a great thing for a first person shooter game and it is kind of open world in the way that small parts of the town are actually open and available for you to walk around. However, because you're Robocop, you walk around very slowly and it can be kind of frustrating getting from A to B. Sprinting in the game is a fast walk basically so it's not really fast when it comes to travelling in other games it's Robocop, so you kind of go a lot slower. But the developers have managed to create a game here that makes you truly feel like Robocop. When you aim down sights in this game, you actually bring up the targeting system like Robocop has. When you're walking through the city and you can hear your footsteps as you walk. And the cheesiest, dodgiest humour you could probably get, which you would expect from Murphy because that's the way it is. The developers have managed to get everything from the Robocop movies and put it into a game and make it feel like a true Robocop game. Okay, so when it comes the side quests there's different types of missions you can do for the side quests these are optional you don't have to do them but you can get things as you're walking around you get calls in that tell you that something's going on and you should investigate you can find people that are committing illegal activities or you can even come across like a crime scene where you can then help to solve a murder from what i've played so far it gives you the ability to really go around and explore the small part of the city that you're in discover crimes or crime scenes in real time and actually give you the ability to get involved and help out so so Robocop's prime directive is to uphold the law, but he also has a directive of upholding public trust. What this means is that sometimes you can make a decision when you discover someone committing a crime or a misdemeanor. You have the ability to either give them a ticket and actually punish them for it, or you have the ability to give them a warning and let them go on their way. Some of these decisions will uphold the law and other ones will uphold public trust. As you play through the game, you have to make a decision of what way you would like to go or try to stay neutral in the middle, but it does actually affect the outcome of the game as you go through. Obviously, if you uphold the law all the time and you don't uphold public trust, you'll find that people will trust Robocop less as you progress through the game. This obviously becomes a problem because this is not what you're supposed to be doing. But what it does is it gives you a feel for how law enforcement have to deal with this kind of thing all the time. And Robocop gives you that decision to either be a good guy or be someone strict and firm with the law. But because of this, the best course of action is not clear to you and you have to go off your own judgment and the best course of action right now is to hit the like button and subscribe because that would be a good thing to do moving on to the combat the combat is very reactive and very visceral whether it's shooting at enemies with a burst pistol picking up their guns and shooting at them with their own weapons punching someone in the face or grabbing them and throwing them into a wall you have the ability to also pick up things like monitors and chairs and throw them as weapons there are also certain walls and places that you can shoot at to destroy them so you can destroy the cover that your enemy is using to hide behind. This gives you a lot more freedom in the way that you play the game and it makes even linear levels where you're going through hallways and corridors feel much more open to interpretation and give you the choice to play it the way that you want to play it. The only big problem I think there is when it comes to the combat is the fact that enemies like to throw grenades a lot. And I mean a lot. In the second mission of the game, I was going into a gang hideout and I found that every time I saw enemies come around the corner, they were ready to throw a grenade at me. What this means is you have to be on your toes. You have to move out of the way quickly or you have to shoot them before they throw the grenade in order to stop them throwing it. Obviously, this can blow up near them and then take them out which is a good thing but at one point i was in an area where there were five enemies hiding behind walls and i had two or three grenades being thrown at me every few seconds 
which got a little bit much, but it made you move around and stopped you kind of camping in one spot. As you progress through the skill tree as well, you'll get new abilities, things like shockwaves that allow you to hurt enemies when they're near you. This kind of opens things up a little bit more and gives you the ability to kind of attack things differently. Also, there's nothing more satisfying than grabbing a dude and throwing him at his buddies to take them out. Without going into too much detail on the storyline of the game, the story itself is engaging. It's an interesting story. It does kind of keep you gripped and keep you interested. Can't really go into too much about that, but the storytelling itself works out pretty well, especially when it comes to the side quests, as side quests aren't just quests that like are just, oh, go and grab this and go and do that. The side quests are designed as stories, which add to a little bit more narrative in the game. Then we move on to the investigation side of the game. The game is not just a first person shooter. There is investigation aspects to the game when you're traveling through levels you can pick up things like stolen wallets and purses and other contraband that actually gives you xp and allows you to collect materials that are evidence towards crimes but at the same time when you go into certain stories like the side quest for example you will have to scan things on the crime scene in order to figure out if they're anything to do with the crime and then follow the clues to figure out who the person is that done it or find out where the person might have gone there are aspects of investigation throughout the game which you'll have to do to figure things out to give you an example on the second mission there's one point where you have to get through a door and you have to figure out a way to get through there so you have to look around there's also parts in some parts of missions where you'll be able to find extra collectibles and things like that and other things for like increasing your XP by finding certain things in the level to open up these pathways through. Pathways that you don't necessarily have to go down and you could just miss them completely. So investigating and looking at everything in the game as you move through the levels is definitely something that's worthwhile. And then of course you've got the graphics and the look of the game. I think the game looks amazing. The developers have managed to make Robocop and everything around it seem faithful to the original films. So they haven't really gone off and tried their own thing on this one. From the police station to the city to the locations that you travel to, it feels like a Robocop game through and through. And any fan of Robocop is going to absolutely love this game. Just as much I'd love it for you to hit that subscribe button and that like button if you haven't already because you've been here for about seven minutes and it's about time you hit it. So now after all of that, it's time to answer that question that I stated at the start of it. Is this the best Robocop game ever released? From the graphics, from the style, to the gameplay, to the combat, every single part of this game, everything in it has put me in a position where I can honestly say that I think this is the best Robocop game that's ever been released. That's not just my opinion though. A lot of other people have the same opinion. There's been a lot of people out there saying this is by far the best one. And if you haven't played this game already and you don't know what it's like, then what are you waiting for? Go out there and get it. It's worth playing for definite. Especially if you're a Robocop fan and you enjoy games like this. Or even just a first person shooter fan. This game is definitely worth the money and it's definitely something you should get. I actually have to give this game a rank of a 9 out of 10 because there are a few little things that don't work out too well but otherwise it is one of the best first person shooter games that I've played in a long time that's story based and not just about wartime stuff. But of course get down in the comments below give me your opinion let me know what you think of the game let me know if you've played it or you're gonna play it I want to hear what you've got to say. Also make sure you hit that like button because I've asked you twice already and you should have done that by now and of course hit the subscribe button. Once you've hit that subscribe button make sure you hit the notification bell so you can keep up to date with the videos that I'm releasing and what I'm releasing in future. So all that's left for me to say is I've been Green Lichen. thank you so much for watching my video especially if you stuck around this far and I will see you in the next one.